Courtney Couch is a coral reef researcher in the Ecosystem Sciences Division uh, with JIMAR at the Pacific Islands Fisheries Science Center. She holds a PhD in Ecology and Evolutionary Biology from Cornell, a Bachelor's in Biology from St. Lawrence, Lawrence University in Canton, New York. She's a project leader for underwater surveys and statistical analyses to assess and monitor coral reef communities and benthic habitat. She just returned from a bleaching survey that uh, the division had been conducting. Her talk is titled Scaling Up Coral Reef Monitoring Through Imagery and Machine Learning. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thanks for letting me share some of our cool science with you. Uh, before I go any further, I want to acknowledge, I'm doing my acknowledgments at the, at the onset here. Uh, what, we, what I'm talking about today and what we are trying to do um, within our division is a, it's a pretty big lift. It requires a lot of very smart scientists, dedicated scientists, a lot of hard work. Um, I want to acknowledge a couple people who are in the room. Rhonda Suka, who is really the technical lead on all of our structure for motion work. Um, John Burns, who's provided a, a tremendous amount of technical support uh, and just brainstorming ideas. Um, the standing group um, at Scripps Institution of Oceanography have been instrumental um, in our progress, as well as our colleagues at UCSD um, who have helped with our advances in CoralNet. So I'm providing a a, sort of a bigger picture view. I'm not going to get into the weeds, so corner me afterwards if you want to talk about a lot of the nitty gritties. So as many of you know, um, our job at uh, the Ecosystem Sciences Division, and specifically the, the, the team that studies coral reefs, is to provide sound science to enable informed and effective implementation um, and implementation of in, uh, ecosystem-based management and conservation strategies uh, for marine ecosystems across the U.S. Um, affiliated Pacific Island region. And so that means that we go to a lot of places, we work um, at really large scale. As many of us know, um, our reliance on imagery is only increasing as it becomes easier to collect imagery. And so what we're really focused in on right now is how do we convert imagery into data and how specifically are we using machine learning to do that? So for the benthic work that we do on coral reefs, our main goals are to assess the status and trends in reef condition and identify reef processes that govern reef resilience. And so as many of you may know, uh, we collect a, a series of reef ecosystem level metrics like benthic cover and structural complexity. Uh, we also look at the reef um, at the colony, the coral colony level scale. So historically, as far as our imagery goes, We've used these small area images or photoquads, as many of you have, and, um, and we've been doing this since 2010. So we're starting here, and now we are, we're trying to get images from metrics, and let's see if I can get the video to work. No. No. Okay. There we go. Awesome. So basically what we're trying to do now is take it from the photo quads all the way up to a large area imagery and extract uh, some of the underlying data that we've historically been collecting with in situ um, divers. So the phase one of this project has been how do we use our photo quads and coral net to get our benthic cover more efficiently and the second phase of this project, which we're just starting to build on, is how uh, do we efficiently extract our colony level data um, in a, a way that it provides us with data more, more efficiently. So let's talk about how we are using CoralNet. So CoralNet was developed by colleagues at UCSD, Oscar Beigebaum and David Kriegman. They were funded as part of the NOAA Fisheries um, the Automated Image Analysis Strategic Initiative. Uh, talk with Ben Moore on, on that. And essentially, CoralNet is an online repository and software for point classification of benthic features. Historically, as many of you have, I'm sure, uh, we annotated this all with humans. We go through, it overlays points, and then we go through and, and go in through the images and uh, and basically say what each, which is underneath each of those points. So it's incredibly time consuming and expensive. Um, 
And the neat thing about CoralNet is that it was designed specifically to reduce the annotation bottleneck. It uses computer vision algorithms for fully and semi-automated classification. So the CoralNet robot uh, learns from the human analyst. So you go through, the humans annotate thousands of images and points. Um, the robot learns as you go. And it uses a combination of color and texture to identify points. And the, the feature that we really love about CoralNet is that it's a, a computer, it's a, a human-assisted computer. So it allows the user to um, identify a threshold in which they want the robot to start identifying. So you could say, after you've trained up an image set, you say, OK, go to town, do what you do. Or you could say, CoralNet robot, only name that point if you're 80% sure. And so it gives us um, an opportunity to keep humans in the loop, which is really important. So um, Ivor Williams uh, led a study, uh, which I was a co-author on, that was published in Frontiers in Marine Science. And ultimately, what we were trying to address was, can CoralNet generate fully automated benthic cover estimates comparable to humans? So we used our test data set of about 1,500 sites from the Mains and American Samoa. Um, the, the imagery spanned a whole wide range of habitats and communities and conditions. Uh, all of the images had been previously annotated by humans. And then we essentially had a trained robot. And essentially what we did is we split the image set into pairs. So half of it, um, we left the training uh, the trained annotations on and half of it we removed and we let the robot sort of go to town and then we swapped it and so you had a by the end you had a fully trained um, uh, robot so on the y-axis here we have the coral net um, robot percent cover estimates that they're giving us and then this is a human analyst so basically what we're seeing here is these are the American Samoa data um, as you can see we had um, the CoralNet robot did just as well uh, with just slightly, oh, slightly overestimated um, coral cover as a whole compared to human analysts. Um, it also did particularly well for a very common uh, coral genera, the Montiprids. Um, it also did well for crustose coral and algae. Um, and not surprisingly to some of us, it did not do particularly well for some of our um, algal groups. So basically what this is telling us is that if all you're interested in is percent coral cover and you have a fully trained robot, and even for some of the really common um, functional, and, uh, uh, functional groups and genera, you could have CoralNet do most of the work for you. However, if you want to get into the weeds on specific species, especially the less abundant taxa, um, there definitely needs to be some more work uh, done on this. So now I want to segue into structure for motion. Structure for motion is um, essentially a type of photogrammetry. It align, it's, functions by aligning hundreds to thousands of images to create um, detailed two-dimensional imagery and three-dimensional models of the reef. It's growing globally, um, not just within the coral reef world, but across uh, a whole range of disciplines. And the cool thing with this is that it's agnostic to um, different collection methods. So we collected a whole bunch of imagery with divers underwater, um, but there are folks using it with aerial drones, AUVs, ROVs underwater. And this is a, a model that the standing group created. Uh, it's a three-dimensional model um, from Palmyra. So this is a really amazing and powerful imagery, but it's, it's just that, it's imagery. So the question here is how do we get data out of these imagery? So they have gone through and manually delineated colonies on the reef, which is, again, very powerful but incredibly time consuming. The other really, um, really exciting thing about this technology is that it gives you the opportunity to look at um, specific habitats through time. So this is before, during, and after a bleaching event in Palmyra. Um, we have started annotating um, models through time and, and are starting to work on integral projection models to look at demographic processes that are driving um, certain reefs. So let's talk about getting data out of the imagery. 
um, and specifically machine learning. So we started by, and I say we, I didn't do any of this. Rhonda did a lot of this. <laughs> um, we started by looking at some of the older um, machine learning technology in ArcGIS and found that, yep, Arc does a pretty good job, but there's a whole lot of noise here. And so after some, a couple months of testing, we realized that it's just, it's a lot more work to go through and manually um, clean this up. Uh, so we decided to put that on the back burner and explore other options. Um, I also want to highlight that uh, through the Sanding Group, they've developed relationships with um, engineers in Italy. And there's a student, a graduate student in Italy who has been working with a, a machine learning tool that was developed for uh, transportation. And they have been able to come up with, um, using a whole ton of training data, been able to come up with more efficient ways to essentially click on coral colonies and have this particular tool identify and delineate colonies. So it's not quite 100% there yet, but it's, there's a lot of progress. So ultimately, what we want to do is be able to sort of merge some of these tools together. So a tremendous amount of work has gone into CoralNet. Um, we are working on the segmentation or delineation of colonies. And so how do we merge those two together? So this model on the, whoops, this model on the uh, right here, this three-dimensional model, has 1,500 images that underpins that. So there's all these JPEG imageries. So what if we could use CoralNet to go through overlay points and then assign those points with some help from humans and then overlay those points on top of the images. So we've, um, NOAA has provided some additional funding to CoralNet to start developing some of these tools. And then what would be amazing is if we have a more automated way to delineate colonies, we could merge those two uh, technologies together uh, to get us into more efficient uh, classification and segmentation of colonies. OK, so I want to wrap up with sort of our bigger vision for some of the challenges that we're experiencing and some of the strategies that we see moving forward. Um, what I've talked about here is, is a vision that we um, within ESD are working on, but really we're hoping that this is something that the structure for motion, the coral reef imagery world can use. We want to create a model and a pipeline that can be widely used by other people. So one of the challenges is the processing power and storage to work at scale. So we have the capacity to, to process a lot of models. A lot of our models are somewhere between 1,000 to 3,000 images, which takes a long time. Um, and so ideally what we would want to see is a mix of local servers and cloud services so that folks who don't have access to a lot of server capacity could use, um, could use this in the cloud. There's a lack of software modularity and pipeline accessibility. So that by that, I mean that we have four different software programs that we're using. It requires time to move imagery between programs. And wouldn't it be amazing if you had um, a nice API that allowed you to talk between those different software and more seamlessly move things between different programs and then make that accessible to a variety of, um, of people? Um, a lack of human integration is a challenge, and one of the things that, again, I mentioned I liked about CoralNet was that it allowed you to keep uh, the humans assist, uh, in the loop on machine learning, because in no world where we ever basically set the robot loose and say, good luck, give us data when you're done, um, we're always going to need humans to both train up data sets as well as make sure that those data sets that are being automated um, are accurate. And then lastly, um, it's time consuming to segment and classify colonies. And that we are still working on. Um, there are a variety of tools out there, but if you know folks that are working on this kind of issue um, or have computer science buddies, let's talk, because it really is going to need a lot of um, people to continue to push this forward. So with that, uh, I have, I think, a minute <laughs> for questions. Thanks. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, and using CoralNet to identify the imagery that makes up the model. Is, it, is there any drive to do it the other way around? Because it, it seems that the sort of physical structure of a coral colony is maybe more diagnostic <laughs> than the way it looks. So if you have the model, 
that there's some way of mathematically sort of learning mm. the shape of it and then combining that with the imagery to get there quicker. Does that make sense? I, I think so. I'm going to try to re repeat that. <laughs> so. Uh, basically, what you're asking is, we, I talked about how we want to push the points through from coral net into the model, and you want to know, can we do the opposite? Can we take the, the objects, the corals, in the model, use that three-dimensional structure to help us identify colonies? Um, we haven't started thinking about that yet, uh, but there's so many new tools and advances, I feel like that's just a matter of time, and, and probably a really great idea. We're sort of starting with a the lowest hanging fruit right now, since we've already had a lot of um, a lot of time and, and training put into coral net, but that's a great idea. Any others for now? Okay, thank you, Courtney. Yep. Thank you.